But the best method, what is the best method that we can adopt? What is the best method that we can adopt to um, host the guest? The best tariqa method is the sunnah of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also taught us and explained to us this method. So that will be the best way to host guests. Leave behind all the cultures and traditions, the glory, the quality of a Muslim is that whatever he does in life, whatever action he does, in which way does he do it? The way that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam demonstrated to us. So if we present food the way we want, and if we present in the way Nabi Sallallahu did, the difference is like the difference between the heavens and the earth. If we adopt the Prophet Sallallahu ways, there will be barakah, blessings, rahmah, mercy, Allah's fadl. And this will be ibadah. Worship will be high-grade ibadah, due to which Allah will be pleased and happy. So this is our deen. This is what Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi has taught to us. That the method I give to you, adopt that. Practice that. The world, people, different areas, etc. People will bring all different new various methods, but you should follow my tariqah. You should, um, for example, Allah Ta'ala says that if you follow the tariqah of Rasul Allah Sallam, then Allah Ta'ala removes, eliminates all problems, issues, people have enmity with you, etc. So what was the blessed method of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to uh, host and feed the guest. We need to look at this. And today in this majlis, alhamdulillah, if we learn this method, then we have taken hold of a very big part of ilm, alhamdulillah, knowledge. And if we do alam, amal on this, then we'll be the alim with the amal. These majalis, gathering, sitting down, coming together. Our pious elders taught us this, that when we learnt, that there's a reason for this. There's a reason for doing dhikr. There's a reason for sitting in the majalis and the gatherings. There's a reason for going into the good company. And that's just one thing, is that through the company, the method, the majalis, we learn, we learn the blessed sunnahs of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is the most valuable thing. Everything else is secondary, and all of the uh, the reason why we have gatherings and we have a bayan or speech or hadith are studied and disseminated, so that we can bring into our lives the method of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi lifestyle. And as the time is passing, people are discarding the sunnah, his methods, and if we leave the sunnah, different issues, problems, difficulties, they surround a person. They surround a person. And such, there was no thing that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, he told us everything. So from where do, do the enemies come from? A person, for example, has uh, attacks and in the morning where he is and in those evening where he is. Everything the Prophet ﷺ scanned. And he told us beautiful du'as of how to be protected if somebody's against you, wants to give you harm. You cannot get this in any deen, in any religion. If you go to the toilet, how you should go in? How should you place your feet inside? So is this just for nothing? No, no. We don't see that for all around us are our enemies, the sort of hidden invisible enemies who are surrounding us, the jinns and the sort of um, evil forces and um, the jinns and shaitans and dark forces. And Allah says that this is my punishment for you, that you left the sunnah of my Habib Wasallam. So this is the punishment you've got. You can go running for the cure, but this is the punishment. Allah says, I've given you protection in your life. Allah's great, great uh, hikmah and mercy for us is that the protection we are desperate for. And Allah Ta'ala also, we practice the sunnah and it's a protection for us but if we practice it we get reward as well as if you sleep like this you'll get this reward you get the reward as well and alhamdulillah thousands of things from you are protected from thousands of things and darkness and there's one sunnah one sunnah if you take one sunnah and you research it then you realize that thousands of illnesses of a human being are eliminated removed subhanallah so what is the methodology that we should listen carefully attentively when our guests come what should we do say subhanallah so let's do amal on this from today because we're going to feed the people have guests everyone has guests if for example somebody will come to your shop even if for example somebody comes to drink tea or if you are giving somebody coke to drink even that person has guests so we have to bring it to our mind straight away the method of the holy prophet that what did he teach us how should we serve the guest if i think he's a guest then i'm the host and i'll get the thawab i'll get the road so you don't need to have lengthy wazifas and prayers and recitations and sujood and big ibadah. No, everybody can do this. Allah Ta'ala has given us these so-called small things. They're not, they're very massive, big deeds and we ignore them. What a great piece of ibadah, hosting a guest. So this is a hadith in Tirmidhi and this is in uh, Zad al-Mu'ad and it's stated that 
um, that when the Holy Prophet ﷺ would have a guest, then the Prophet ﷺ would treat his guest how? That he would feed his guest on his own dastarkhan in this way. On his food mat, the Prophet ﷺ would feed or present the food to his guest in this way. These are the words of the hadith. How? That when the food was presented and the guest... Time and time again, time and time again, the Prophet ﷺ would say, eat some more, eat some more. Time and time again, the Prophet ﷺ would tell the guest, have some more, have some more. And until the guest was not uh, satisfied, and he had not eaten, and he himself didn't reject or deny, the Prophet ﷺ would keep on saying to the guest, have some more. Then he'd stop. Yes, that your guest, the Holy, the Prophet ﷺ would feed his guests on his dastarkhan, on his food mass. So this is the first point, that this is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, the all tariqah's methods he put to the side, and the Holy Prophet ﷺ sunnah, doesn't matter what generation you live in, food you give to the guests, whether it's a feast, a big walima, celebration, but you feed the guest on the dastarkhan. And be careful that when you do amal on the sunnah, never in your mind should you bring the point of people who say that I'm following the sunnah. No. Don't do it to show, look I'm following the sunnah, he's not following the sunnah. Don't look down at people. That's why the pious pieces have stated that dahiri sunnahs, for their murids, they used to stop their murids, that don't do these because you will have to cover pride. Oh look, uh, with the tahmad, the dhoti, he wears this, I'm wearing imam, and doing this, he's doing this without that. I do this and that. The kabur comes into that person's life. Pride, he starts to make a fuss. So the cure for this, the pious predecessors have said, that on a certain stage they give ijazah that you can wear this libas.